This tutorial will look at frequency tables and percentage frequency tables, what they are and how they work. So let's start by looking at this um, table of data that I've gathered. I've got a group of people and I've asked them what colour their eyes are. So that's categorical data that I've gathered and I've presented it. These are the answers that I've written down. Now this is all a bit of a hodgepodge. I can't really gather much information from looking at this visually. Um, so I need to represent it in a way that it's much easier to pick up the information from it quickly. And so what I'm going to do is put it into a percentage, uh, sorry, into a frequency table. So here I've just got a table that I've drawn. And in this first column here on the left, we're going to put eye colour because that's the variable. That's the, well, that's the information that we've been gathering up, isn't it? And in this column over here, I'm going to put the frequency, how often I got that response from the people that I was surveying. So let's start with Hazel as this first one in this column here. Now, how many times did that occur? Okay, so I've got one here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I count 10 times. So my frequency that Hazel occurred in this group of people that I was asking, how many times did that come up? It came up 10 times, hence a frequency of 10. It was that frequent. So now let's do brown. This one, here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So brown occurred eight times. What else is in that list? Okay, let's try blue. How many times did that occur? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. And the last one there is green. How many times did that occur? One, two, three, and that's the total. And as you can see there, now I'm going to put total along the bottom and it should be the sum of these. So that is 10 plus 8 plus 9 plus 3 gives me the total of all these uh, variables, these data points that I collected, which is 30. So my total is 30. And just to double check that, I'd look back at my data, what have I got? I've got one, two, three, four, five going along and one, two, three, four, five, six going down. So it's six times five is 30. So I have counted up the right amount and I haven't forgotten any of them. So now I've got a frequency table and that's basically what all it is. A frequency table is counting up the number of times a particular um, answer, I guess, what occurred in your um, collecting of data. The other thing that we can do with frequency tables is put a percentage in there because that can sometimes give us a bit more information. So what I'm going to do is add another column here and say percentage. And what I'm talking about is collecting the information around this figure here, this 10, as a percentage of the total 30. And the reason I would do that, I can look here 10, 8, 9, they're all kind of close together. I want to know what, what percentage did each of these um, have of the whole. I can already see that green was a fairly low percentage, but let's get specific about these ones. So if you recall, how do we work out percentage? Well, to find 10 as a percentage of 30, we'd say 10 divided by 30 times 100. And for 8, we'd do 8 divided by 30 times 100. So figuring out percentage is always your answer, like the what you're trying to find the percentage, divided by the whole, the sum, the total, uh, and then times 100. Okay, so I've just worked those out on the calculator quickly. There they are. And you should always check when you're doing something like this that the total adds up to what you're expecting it to. So if I've got all of these as a percentage of the whole, What's my whole going to be? 100%, hopefully. So 33 plus 27 plus 30 plus 10 is 60, 90, 100. Perfect. And that is a percentage frequency table. 
So what does that look like with numerical data? Well, it basically looks the same. Here we've got uh, some ages of a further maths class, let's say. So I've asked the students how old they are and I've recorded it in whole numbers only. So I haven't measured it down to you know the minute that they were born. But it is continuous data. I could measure it that specifically if I wanted to. So I'm going to put in this left column the age of the students. And over here, I'm going to put the frequency. So what figures have we had appearing here? It looks like the lowest is 16 and the highest is 20 over here. So I'm going to put 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. And how did I choose which um, how to break these up? Well, I've basically got all of these going up by ones. Now, 19 doesn't occur in this list. But if I've chosen to increase my categories here, um, that I'm the way I'm breaking up my frequency table, the, the different columns that I'm um, sorry, rows that I'm breaking it up into, if they're all increasing by one, if I didn't include a row for 19, that wouldn't really make sense. Um, you need to be consistent in how you scale these, obviously. Um, so now I'm going to count up the number of times that each of these occurred. So we've got 16, 1, two times, frequency of two. What about 17? One, two, three, four, five, six times, frequency of six. 18, one, two, three, four, five, frequency of five. 19, doesn't occur, so that gives it a frequency of zero. And 20 occurs the once. And this makes my total data points. Um, 2, 6, 5, 1, 14. And just to check that, what I would normally do um, if this was in an exam or something, I'd just go along here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Just count them up just to be sure because you know it's the easiest way to make sure that you didn't skip any in the list. Just make sure your two, your two totals are the same. Okay, so let's we could leave it at that if we were asked to just create a frequency table, but let's add a percentage column as well just so we can practice that. So I want to know what 2 is as a percentage of 14. So how do I do that? 2 divided by 14 times 100. Same for 6. 6 divided by 14 times 100. Same for 5. 5 divided by 14 times 100, etc, etc. Okay, so there's the percentages I've just worked out, and I would always do a check to make sure that those add up to 100% as well. So 14 plus 43 plus 36 plus 7 is 100. So there you have a percentage frequency table with some fairly simple numerical data. But what happens if I have more complicated data? Well, here we have uh, some another set of data, which is the heights say of a further maths class. Now as you can see this would be a little bit tricky to break down in the way I did the last example where I had going up by 1, 16, 17, 18, 19 etc because I've got my data is a bit more spread out and I've got quite a bit of it here and you can see it looks like the lowest one there is about 145 and here's a high one at 187. So if I went if my table was 145, 146, 147, 140, etc., etc., all the way up to 187, it would be a very long table. Um, there might be only one occurrence of each, and it wouldn't it wouldn't be um, a very useful way of presenting the information because it wouldn't make it quick for me to read off certain statistics, which is the idea behind creating this frequency table, so that we can look at it and at a glance say, ah, well, you know, these people, this this group was 36% of the entire uh, population sample. So what I need to do with this data is break it into chunks and I'm going to present the different chunks in, uh, in as each of the rows in a frequency table. And what I mean by that is you can see the range here goes from about 145 to about 187 um, and so I might choose to go up by increments of five centimeters because then I'm not going to have 20 different uh, lines rows in my table um, and it'd be a much more manageable um, looking thing. So this is what I'm talking about here. This is our data up here, same data. And here I've just created a frequency table which I've broken down into 145 up to 149 and then 150 up to 154, 
155 up to 159, etc., etc. And so I've more than halved the number of rows I need to have in this table, and it makes it something that um, is small enough to look at and at a glance uh, pull some information out about what is the most uh, common height. Is this a particularly tall class? Is it a particularly short class? Things like that. So again, collecting up the frequencies for each of these is very similar to as with the previous examples. I'm just counting up the occurrence of the uh, anything that falls within this range here. Um, so anything that's 145 to 149, I'm going to add up. So I can see one here, that's one in that range. And this one here falls in that range. And what else? And that's it. So I've got a frequency of two that occurs in that range. What about this one? 150 to 154. 157 is not in that range. One fifty five is not in that range. One fifty one, there's one. And that's it. So that only occurs once. What about one fifty five to one fifty nine? Well that one there falls in that range. That falls in that range, so we're up to two. There's another one, three. There's another one, four. There's another one, five. And you continue this process for each of these. So there's my table filled in. And what I can see now from having a glance at this is that the heights are kind of centered around the, the middle of the scale. I've got small numbers um, in the shorter end of the scale, two, two occurrences and one occurrence. And then I've got more occurrences in the middle here, and then it tapers off again at the end. So generally, this people are sort of mid mid height I guess you could say they they tend to all cluster around these heights here and that tells us something about the shape of um, this data the shape of this distribution and we'll talk about that a little bit later in another video and just to complete this table you're not always asked for the percentage frequency this extra column but if you were this would be how we'd work it out we'd need to know the total how many uh, of each frequency we had occurring so there'd be another little line on the bottom here for the total and we'd add them all up sorry my phone just rang um, so we're adding up the totals here and so we've got 2 plus 1 plus 5 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 which is 30 and just to check, you would always want to go back to these data points. I've got one, two, three, four, five going across and six going down, which is 30. So just whenever you can, do a little double check for yourself to make sure that your totals match, because then you know you haven't accidentally forgotten to include one of these items in the table. Because um, that's a fairly common um, mistake with this type of thing, is you accidentally leave one off the list and it doesn't get counted in the frequency. So just the last step here is to work out the percentage frequency. So I want to say 2 divided by 30, this, this answer divided by my total times 100. And same down the line. So 1 divided by 30 times 100 and then 5 divided by 30 times 100, etc, etc. And there are those percentages worked out on the calculator uh, to two decimal places. And the reason I chose to do a couple of decimal places instead of rounding that up to a whole percentage um, is because I've got quite a few data points here. Um, and if I round it up, I might end up not getting 100% as my uh, total. I might get 99 or 101 depending on there being rounding errors. So more detail is better in that sort of instance. In fact, whenever you're doing calculations like this, it's always a good idea to uh, go to two or three decimal places, I would say. And that's it. That's the basics of how frequency tables and percentage frequency tables work. Have a look at the next video for uh, frequency histograms and bar charts.